My name is Cole Marshall. I'm a partner here at McAfee and Taft. I've been with the firm for about 12 years now. Um, I grew up in Enid, Oklahoma. Family farmed in Hennessy, Oklahoma, Kingfisher County. Uh, farm kid, uh, born and raised in that respect. Um, every day but Sunday in the summertime, I was on the farm running the tractor or helping our family commercial axe burning company. Um, I went to Oklahoma State University for undergrad, got an agriculture, economics, and accounting degree there. Uh, took a year after college and did some business consulting and strategy work in the Dallas-Fort Worth area and then came back, went to law school. And um, I'm here at McAfee and Tap today, still, still uh, active in the farming, agricultural world, uh, not as much as I'd like to. I help out with my father-in-law who farms in Omega, Oklahoma. Um, we help out with harvest every year, but uh, that's about the extent that I could get out there anymore. Uh, would like to spend a lot more time out there, but I don't. But uh, yeah, so farm kid turned uh, big city lawyer, if you will. So when thinking about uh, who can own land in Oklahoma and whether there's restrictions on foreign ownership of land, you start with section one of article 22 of the Oklahoma Constitution. That prohibits any alien or person who is not a citizen of the United States from owning land in the state. Um, it also directed that that article of the Constitution also gave a direct mandate to the state legislator, le legislature to uh, pass statutes to further implement that rule. And they did exactly that. So you also have to look at Title 60, Sections 121 through 127. Um, there's a few exceptions to the rule I just mentioned, um, and those are sort of fleshed out in the statutes as well as some of the case law that's developed over time. But the most prevalent case is the Hillcrest Investments case heard by the Oklahoma Supreme Court in 1981. And between the Constitution, the statutes, and the Hillcrest case, when read all together, you basically have a general rule that is aliens, um, individuals, or entities uh, that take up residency in the case of individuals or qualify to do business in Oklahoma in the case of entities are considered compliant uh, for that restriction um, and as having become bona fide residents of the state. So in other words, there's a general prohibition on foreign persons or corporations from other countries, not from other states, but other countries from owning land in Oklahoma but they can become residents by taking up residency for individuals in Oklahoma or by qualifying to do p business in Oklahoma, which is a, is a filing with the Secretary of State and making that entity subject to Oklahoma's laws. The, the enforcement of this law falls on the shoulders of the Oklahoma Attorney General or uh, for the district attorney in the county where the land is located. And, the, and it's a fairly simple uh, concept in that regard. Um, the Attorney General or the District Attorney as, as applicable um, enforces it by filing suit uh, seeking to have the land escheated to the state, meaning it's taken by the state. However, prior to bringing the suit, they have to give the landowner that's in violation of the rule 30 days notice, um, which is a sort of a safeguard uh, for the landowner who can then try to become compliant with the rule um, and go from there. And then if they do end up uh, you know, winning the suit against them, the state holds the proceeds from that. They sell the property and they hold the proceeds of the sale for a year. And then the, you know, the, the party that, that lost the land can claim the proceeds. And if they don't, the proceeds go to the state as well. In addition to Oklahoma, there are a handful of other states that do have foreign ownership restrictions. Um, there, there's, not a, there's not a majority of states. There are several states that don't have any at all. Um, I personally have not studied the, the individual uh, restrictions in the other states. Um, it's very case or very state specific as, as is property law in general. Um, however, the fact that Oklahoma's restrictions are here um, and the historical approach that Oklahoma took in the 70s, which led to the Hillcrest Investments case, shows you that Oklahoma has you know, historically a more aggressive approach to foreign ownership of land in Oklahoma. Um, so I, that leads me to believe that we tend to be more protective on that front than what other states are. In the narrow vein of foreign ownership of land in Oklahoma, there is no distinction 
between agricultural land or non-agricultural land. But however, you always have to consider the corporate farming statutes in Oklahoma that do apply to any entity, whether foreign or um, domestic. So Oklahoma, uh, on the national scale, I would say is sort of out front, if you will, on these types of rules. Most states don't have them. California had them at one time and repealed them. Um, and it's, you know, largely because Oklahoma's a, an ag state. We, these laws are in place um, to protect family farmers, and just like the corporate farming statutes are. Uh, I'm sure that's what was in mind when the, the drafters of our Constitution put it in there. They, they knew what uh, industries were big in the state, and that's why they, that's why they uh, implemented these rules.